Hey there, folks, and welcome back. In our last couple of lessons, we've discussed the role of the tangent line back in Calculus 1, and we've since generalized that notion to tangent planes in Calculus 3. As a reminder, the tangent line is important because it allows us to approximate the values of our function. If you think about this a little differently, the tangent line tells us how sensitive our function is to tiny, tiny changes in the inputs. For example, suppose that we found the equation of the tangent line at some point x equals a, and then we make a tiny adjustment to this input by adding a small quantity delta x. Of course, this change in inputs is going to lead to some change in the outputs, and maybe we want to quantify this change. By moving from a to a plus delta x, how big a change can we expect in the value of our function? Well, I guess we could calculate this change exactly by computing the function's value at a plus delta x and then subtracting off the value at a, but hold on a second. You might remember from the last video that plugging in certain inputs can be a real pain in the butt. If this function f of x is quite complicated, we might not want to calculate its exact value at a plus delta x. Instead, we can notice that as long as this change delta x is really small, then the value of my function at a plus delta x will be very close to the value of my tangent line at a plus delta x. So as long as we're willing to settle for an approximation, we can estimate the change in our function's value by estimating the change in the height of the tangent line. That is, we can compute this quantity here. That quantity is, well, it's the height of the tangent line at a plus delta x. It's f prime a times a plus delta x minus a plus f of a. I'm just using this formula here. And then we'd have to subtract off the value of the tangent line at a, which is simply f of a. If you clean this up, you find the approximate change in the height of your function is f prime a delta x. Now, of course, this approximation is really only meaningful when the change in our inputs delta x is quite small. In fact, we often denote this by dx, which we refer to as the differential of x. It's just there to emphasize that the change in inputs is incredibly tiny. This entire quantity that you see here, f prime a dx, is known as the differential of our function f, and it's denoted by df. It's the approximate change in the value of the function resulting from a small change in the inputs. So what we've just said is that delta f, the actual change, is approximately equal to the differential df, which is f prime a dx. Okay, now that we've had a chance to review differentials from Calculus 1, we're ready to explore this concept in Calculus 3. The motivation is exactly the same. Suppose that we have some function f, and we know its value at some nice input, x naught, y naught. We are interested in understanding how much our function is going to change as we move from x naught, y naught to some other point nearby. So take a look at this second graph where you can see a bit more of the action. If we start at x naught, y naught and move over here to this green point, well, that's going to cause some change in our z values. We might not want to calculate that change exactly because plugging in that green point could be a real nightmare. But just like before, we can approximate this change. We no longer have a tangent line, we have a tangent plane, but it still plays the same role. The change in height of my function is approximately equal to the change in height of my tangent plane, as long as this green point is pretty close to the point at which I started. So what we're saying here is that the actual change in the height of our function, delta f, is approximately equal to the change in height of our tangent plane. The value of the tangent plane at this point, x, y, is fx, x naught, y naught, times x minus x naught, plus fy, x naught, y naught, times y minus y naught, plus fx naught, y naught. This is just from our tangent plane equation. Then we have to subtract the value of the tangent plane at this point, x naught, y naught. So we take off f of x naught, y naught. That leaves us with just these first two terms that you see here. But hold on a second x minus x naught is really our change in x, and y minus y naught is really our change in y. So I'm going to write those as delta x and delta y respectively. That means that our change in f is approximately equal to fx x naught y naught times delta x plus fy x naught y naught times delta y. Now just like on the last slide, this approximation is really only meaningful when delta x and delta y are really, really small. So as we did before, we're going to denote them by dx and dy, the differentials of x and y. They just represent very, very small changes. 
Once again, this whole quantity is denoted by df, and it's the differential of our function. We're once again saying that delta f is approximately equal to the differential df, which is the partial with respect to x times dx, plus the partial with respect to y dy. Now, for whatever reason, I remember as a student finding this topic to be a little confusing. So if you're not feeling completely comfortable with differentials, that's okay. Just make sure that you go back to the textbook and try some practice problems. To wrap up this video, why don't we try an example together? Here's a typical example that you might see when talking about differentials. Suppose that we have some function f, and its partial derivative with respect to x at the point 3, 4 is equal to 177. Its partial derivative with respect to y at 3, 4 is equal to 36. I want to approximate the change in the value of my function f as we move from this point 3, 4 to the nearby point 2.9, 4.2. Okay, well according to what we discussed on the last slide, the actual change in f is approximately equal to the differential df. Now, df, we have a formula for that. It's partial f by partial x at 3, 4 times dx plus partial f over partial y at 3, 4 times dy. We're given the values of these partial derivatives, right? The partial with respect to x is 177. The partial with respect to y is 36. But what are these quantities dx and dy? Well, dx is the change in x delta x. As we move from 3, 4 to 2.9, 4.2, x is going to decrease by 0.1. So dx is equal to delta x, which is minus 0.1. dy, on the other hand, is equal to delta y, which in this case is plus 0.2. By moving from 3, 4 to 2.9, 4.2, my y value increases by 0.2. This means that our approximate change in the value of the function is 177 times minus 0.1 plus 36 times 0.2. That's minus 17.7 .7 plus 7.2. I believe that is minus 10.5. So in summary, we expect the value of the function to decrease by about 10.5 units as we move from 3.4 to 2.9, 4.2. Now, do these numbers look familiar? Hopefully they do, because they're the same numbers that showed up in our last lesson when we talked about the temperature of that pizza. If you revisit that problem, we found that the temperature of the pizza at 3.4 was 125 degrees, and the approximate temperature of the pizza at 2.9, 4.2 was 114.5 degrees, a decrease by 10.5 degrees Celsius. So really, we're doing the same sort of thing with differentials as we did last time with tangent planes. The advantage here is we don't really need to know the precise values of the function. We just need to know the values of its partial derivatives because those will allow us to estimate the function's change.